first off, if you can't remember your dreams, you're not going to know when you're dreaming, right? So you have to do that first. Second, if you don't know you're dreaming, how can you elicit a dream? Because you have to be able to know when you're dreaming. You have to know you're in a dream to control the dream. So how do you how do you get to that point? Right here with me, Steve has been practicing lucid dreaming for how long? About how long? Yeah, so since, uh, um, well, since I actually started doing it, probably since middle school or high school. Hmm. I mean, uh, so it's, it's been quite some time, at least five years of experience. I started writing down my dreams. And I guess I thought, you know, I guess I was just fascinated with dreams. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to start writing them down in a journal because I want to I want to remember them. I want to hold on to these memories and I don't want to grow up and just forget about all these dreams. You know, so I started doing that. Um, I started writing down my dreams in a journal in elementary school, which is actually a technique to lucid dream. And I also wrote down all the ones I could remember from elementary school. So those don't have dates. But then I started dating my dreams in elementary. I mean, in middle school and after middle school, high school and high school is probably when I got into my it's been a long time so it's all my timeline's all messed up but i think i probably got into lucid dreaming and first learned about it in high school and then i started learning about techniques to do it probably at the last half of high school and i started having more and more dreams my dreams are getting longer and more vivid more detailed crazier experiences crazy long lucid dreams like four five eight pages worth of lucid dreaming experiences that i had of just one lucid dream. I think maybe in college that I really got more into the details of how, again, the timeline's messed up. It could have been high school, it could have been college. When I started really getting into the mechanics of lucid dreaming, how to lucid dream. And then in grad school, I got even more specific about specific like techniques to lucid dream. And so I would say my college years, like undergrad, grad was when I really learned the techniques. I started noticing, and I heard this thing in research that most people have lucid dreams in the early morning. When REM sleep is the highest, for whatever reason, REM sleep tends to be more vivid and stuff like that higher, I guess, in the early morning. Um, I, I guess that as the sleep cycle is wrapping up, you know, in high school, I did have a lot of most of my lucid dreams were in the morning. And then I heard techniques where you can't where it's better to try to induce lucid dreams in the morning, you know, because it just makes sense. All the research supports you have more lucid dreams in the morning. First technique is you want to remember your dreams. And I don't know, Jose, like how, how well do you remember your dreams? Uh, it takes practice because I've noticed that when you started telling me about writing down your dreams, whether it was something simple, whether it was just a little bit about it, writing it down really helped to kind of the next time be able to remember my dream even better. And so it was almost like a practice of telling my body saying, hey, this is something that's important, which is actually, uh, it comes back to our ancestors. Our ancestors actually used to wake up at four or five in the morning. Like you said, morning is, is a special time um, for like REM. They would wake up and tell each other each other's dreams. They themselves knew the power of waking up early and the power of dreams. Civilizations put more value on dreams back then. Yes. That's, writing down your dreams, you notice that you started remembering them more. A lot of people yeah. make the mistake of saying, "Well, I don't, I don't have any dreams." It's like, no, no, no. We have dreams every night. We just don't remember them. You know, so you're, it's not that you're not having dreams. It's just that you don't remember them. But if you start writing them down, because we don't find value in them, right? Our yeah. our mind tends to uh, forget or or remove things that yeah. we don't found value. Yeah, in it could be an unconscious process. When you write down your dreams, you're telling your brain, I think unconsciously that this is important, you know, cause you're actively making a physical decision and choice to write it down. And <clears throat> your brain is like, you know, this must be pretty important. He's writing it down. I don't know. I don't remember my dream last night. How am I supposed to write it down? Well, it's like write down the last dream you remember and write down even if it's a small detail, even if it's an emotion, anything you can remember, any tiny little speck, write it down because soon enough, it'll start coming. They'll start coming to you. That's a sweet. Like I turn off my alarm and then I go back to sleep, but then my body knows that I'm going back into sleep. So when I start dreaming, I know that I'm sleeping, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's not like you're starting the night from the beginning. You just fall. Yeah, it's not like it, it just starts at midnight and then I yeah. realize I'm. It's like you I'm, just woke up and you know you're going back to sleep so that you're kind of like aware that you're. It's like preset. Yeah. 
So you want to look at your dreams in your dream journal and start finding patterns. And the most common patterns are what you want to go off of when choosing a dream sign. Um, Because those are the things that reoccur in your dreams the most. So you're more likely to have a dream the next night with that same thing happening again. So you want to notice that, like, what is different that's reoccurring in these dreams that's different from real life? Uh, Like for me, in dreams, spraying a web as Spider-Man was my dream sign because I did that a lot, even before I learned about it. And so like, whenever I think I'm dreaming, I'll try to spray a web. And if a web comes out, then I'm like, oh, okay, I am dreaming. And then I can yeah. I a lucid dream, you know? Other people do things like look at clocks. If the clock changes and acts weird, then you're dreaming. Other people have very personal dream signs that's unique to them. Some people will like uh, do the finger, push the finger through the hand thing, which is a very common, popular one. So like you do this like daily almost. And then you'll do it in a dream and your finger will go through your hand and you're like, oh, I'm dreaming. So the idea is that if you develop a habit of doing that, then you're going to carry that habit on into the dream because we dream about what we do in day-to-day life. So that habit of checking whether you're in a dream will carry on into your dreams because you'll dream about the habit of doing it in your dream. And then when you do it in the dream, something will go really weird. And then you're like, oh, I'm in, I'm in a dream. So that's step two. And then step three, actually lucid dreaming. So step three is like, is just taking it slow because um i've told you before like if you go too fast in a lucid dream you get too excited then you wake up so you practicing meditation during the day uh taking it slow when you have your lucid dream uh, doing a technique like spinning around